Good morning, ladies. Welcome to the Women Talk Show. I am Bridget Lasardiel, founder and CEO Squared of Women Talk, and I have a fabulous guest today, Joanne Stoneberg. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you so much for having me here, Bridget. It's an honor and yeah, just to speak and be with Women Talk. Geez, I think I think we're going to be roommates very soon. Like you are so involved with women talk. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Just jump in with both feet. (laughs) You certainly did. Like you've just come on board with women talk. Like how long ago did you start coming to events and all that? It wasn't that long ago. No, I think in the spring I started like June, July in there somewhere. And then I uh, joined women talk, became a member. And wanted to also be a speaker at the convention coming up in October here, real shortly. And then I thought, why not do something, get involved with community? So I decided to become a co-director for the South. I was sitting around with Michelle, who's the director of Calgary South. And I said, so what's all involved in becoming a director or a (laughs) co-director? So I know it's been crazy. Like. All of a sudden, you applied to you get candid, then you applied to talk, then you applied to be at the convention, and then you became a co director. And it was like, Woo! Um, what is it that um, kind of attracted you to women talk? Like, what is it that you like about it when you go to the events? I like, I like the fact that it's it's casual, it's uh, very informal with everyone, women just sharing their personal stories. So having gone to a lot of different networking events all the time, it's nice to go to a place where women are just sharing their personal stories and learning from each other and knowing that you're all together, you're in the same tribe. And it's also very healing. They, um, back in the day, like long time ago, uh, they used to do that. The, the tribes would, would tell their stories, you know, with amongst everybody. And, and it's so healing as well. I, I just really enjoy that. Yeah. And um, yeah, like, you know, we've gotten to a place now where, and I know I have that disease where it's like, I'm good. I'm good. I got this. I can do it on my own. It's all good. And I was reading the example, for example, of doing laundry. You know, now yeah. we're all in our homes. We have a washing machine and we're good. We're doing it. But back in the day, we'd all be at the river with our washing boards together and visiting and talking. And, you know, yeah. it's it's really changed our lives. And there's no time for story sharing anymore. Exactly. So this is a really awesome format to get together and helping women know that we are all in the same boat. We are supported. Everyone goes through similar things, you know. Yeah. And how was it like the the first time you spoke at Women Talk? What did you feel like? The first time I spoke was really nervous. I was very robotic. I was very, um, (laughs) very logical and chronological in my, this happened and this happened and this happened. And then afterwards, I'm like, okay, there was a little bit, bit of emotion in there, but it's like, no, no, get into the guts, get into the emotion, tell your story, right? You know, it's so. so funny. I just said that to one of my talkers uh, in Edmonton. It's like, you're a great speaker. Your story is amazing. You're entertaining, but get out of here. Yeah. You know, say it from here. And it makes, because we would never like talk to our girlfriends that way. But often when we're public yeah. speaking, we totally get in a logical way. There's just, We take the emotions out of it. Yeah. Exactly. And then the second and third times that I've spoken uh, brought more emotion into it. It's like, okay, pick a segment out of your life, like, a, and then give a bit of a timeline, of course, and yeah. then go, in, go into the emotion of that event and that situation that happened that occurred for you. So yeah. that's what I and everyone really resonated and they're like, oh my God. And, you know, <laughs> so cool. I saw your first talk. I have not seen you talk since. And I don't think I'll be seeing you until the convention where right. you're speaking at. And, um, but you know, what's been really amazing for me at Women Talk is seeing my members and directors uh, evolve. You know, that first time they speak, where like, I like that robotic because that's all we all do it the first time, right? But then seeing them loosen up and become storytellers, like it's so fun. I love it that. Is, 
it is, and I so invite people to come and share their stories or even just to come and watch, right? Even just to come and watch. And it's, it's a night out with the girls only. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, I'm trying to get that picture. Hold on here. I think I'll get it eventually. No, it won't go forward, but we're going to go in three. So okay. check out that pictures lady, that picture ladies. How awesome is that picture? Just love it. So yeah. let's talk about you and what you do. Okay. First, I'd like to mention that the photographer for this picture, she's awesome. Her name is Angie Anderson. Mm -hmm. And she's actually, she's a professional photographer and Angie Anderson photography. So I just got to give her kudos for that. So it's anyway. so good. I love, love that picture. I think everybody that sees that picture, they're like, whoa, it's sexy. It's powerful. It's intriguing. It's such a great photo. <laughs> Thank you. So, so yeah. So coming back to your question there about, about me, um, how I got started doing what I'm doing now. I wasn't always, well, I shouldn't say that. I wasn't always uh, doing what I'm doing now full time. And I worked in the oil and gas industry for 17 years in accounting. <laughs> and, accounting, and so, all things. Yeah, I know, right? People are like, how can you be like reading tarot and astrology and all this and you're, you do accounting? Like, <laughs> People had trouble putting those two things together. But when you really look at the metaphysical world, there's a lot of science and math to it. So it's mm. the way the brain operates, right? So anyway, yeah. during my time in the oil and gas industry, I always did studies and did readings and learned and trained more about myself in the metaphysical world training myself in astrology, got into astrology back in 2003, and I just fell in love with it. It was my passion. And when I took classes, it, it the, the information just like quick, 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 like I couldn't download it fast enough. <laughs> then studied nonstop for about four years. And I'm sitting there one day. So I'm sitting there one day and I'm like, how am I going to study this? Like, there's no like A, B, C, lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, right? Because astrology is in a circle, right? And everything, you get all these moving parts. And I'm sitting there, okay, let's think of it like a puzzle. So that's what I did. I thought of it like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And putting all the, the different components of that together. And then eventually the picture opens up. You see the bigger picture. Very cool. Well, let's get back for just one second to your speaking because people are commenting. And uh, for example, Lori Cowling, who's the director of Women Talk Okotoks, I love how she celebrates herself in her passion. So that's awesome. And our uh, CEO Squared, my fabulous, amazing partner, uh, Nancy Seeger, um, she says, you're getting better every time. So I can't wait to see you because <laughs> at the convention, you're yeah. going to be doing a 20 minute presentation about yes. astrology because you're an astrologer. Is that your main, your main thing is astrology? That is my main premise. Uh, it's so it's like when you learn a different language, you always think in the two languages, right? Yeah. So for me, I always think I always equate and um, everything to astrology. And when I was riding the train uh, to work every day back in the back when my other life, <laughs> I would notice where the moon was. If the moon was in the sign of Gemini everybody on the train would be chatty, chatty, chatty. And, you know, it'd be really like noisy, you know, music going, people reading, you know, chatty, chatty, chatty. And then on days when the moon was in Pisces, everyone's like sleeping. <laughs> it was hilarious. That's so wild. So how did you ever get into astrology? So I went to a, a, a lecture that was put on by a group of people. And one of them was talking about astrology. And I got home and I'm like, I want to learn astrology. Well, the universe heard me. I'm like, bingo, like everything lit up. There was a big party on the other side and big, the big universal doors opened up and everything astrology fell out. I, everywhere I went, I was running into astrologers and books and classes and conferences. And like I said, before I studied nonstop for four or five years, and I'm still studying today because it's an endless rabbit hole. There's so <laughs> 
to learn. <laughs> Planet hole. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a, it's a black hole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. black it just hole. keeps going and going and going. It keeps going. Yep. Yeah. It keeps you know, going. The, the one thing I love about astrology is, um, as a kid, uh, my aunts and my moms, they all dabbled in it. They all read the newspaper astrology thing, you know. And it was the only kind of woo-woo thing I ever was exposed to. Like, I was never exposed to anything else but astrology. So there's a lot of people that like astrology, isn't there? Oh, there is. And they say that astrology is the second oldest profession on the planet. Oh, so wow. Yeah, well, you have to remember back back then they didn't have clocks and calendars, so they used the planets to tell time and to know when to plant and the seasons and what was going on. So there's a real observation and correlation between where the planets are and what's happening on the planet. So, so when you deal with people, like for example, if I was to come to you, I'd say I'm a Taurus, born May eighth. Um, what do you have to say for me? So do you, is that what you deal with or more the planet in general for everyone or how does that hold? Because all I know is I read my <laughs> astrology prediction, you know, I'm now <laughs> online, but. <laughs> right. So if we're just looking at the sun sign that everybody's aware of, like you're a Taurus, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So Taurus people are very, Taurus is an earth sign. So very grounded, like for Taurus, the bull, right? If you think of the bull, the symbolism of the bull, and they're stubborn, they can be stubborn, they can be bullheaded, and they're like, we're going for it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they're also very tactile, okay? Taurus is all very tactile, so their senses, they have to have the com creature comforts, you know, in their home, and things have to feel good, and, you know, it's, it's how they how you express yourself. So you also, Taurus also needs security and stability. So they're also, you know, need that financial security and need that stability of relationships as well to help them because that helps them really express their true authentic self. You get off tr track with that, then things go sideways. And that's when chaos sort of happens in your life a little bit. So how, uh, it's so fascinating to me because you're describing me to a T and just from when and where I was born that you're able, like, it's just so fascinating. How do you explain that? <laughs> uh, so it's, it's equating all of the signs to a personality, to an archetype. So there's a few other components in astrology. So if we look at all the planets, so the sun is our authentic self, our purpose in life and all the other planets also have a archetype which we won't go into because that'll take forever and <laughs> take too long and but it's also too so the planets are like the actors and the signs are like the costumes we wear and then this the stage or the environment where we play that out is done when we look at your chart so it you know there's many many layers to really tell what's going on with the person and the other really main um, actor that I like to bring in is the moon sign. So the moon sign is our feeling, our inner emotional self. So, for example, uh, children or people with moon in Gemini, Gemini is all about communication and talking and speaking, anything to do with communication. And moon and Gemini people need to be heard. They need to be listened to. If they're not being heard or listened to, that can really, you know, dampen their your their um spirit yeah, and i literally i swear to god to you like it was maybe three months ago i found out about the moon sign i was like what there's like <laughs> i have another sign what is that like i was just it was crazy so i, I guess mine is leo that's oh, what i was told so that so makes sense for you because the moon and leo they need that recognition they need that accolades they need the the you know, the, the feedback, it's like, oh yes, I'm wonderful. And it's great. And, you know, and just what you're doing here with all your women talk and being on stage, you love that. And that feeds your moon and Leo because it feels good for you. Yeah. And it's just, it blows my mind. Like it, all of it describes me perfectly. It's crazy. I know it's, it's, it's wild when you start really looking at the moon and, and it's, 
it's really cool when you start looking at the differences in that. So for example, too, uh, Sagittarians, all right? So I'm a Sagittarius, <laughs> okay? And Sagittarians were usually, my niece is also Sagittarian and it's like, okay, where on the planet are you today? Because they travel a lot. <laughs> they like to go here and there, depending. Some Sagges don't, but most of them do. You know, that's just sort of the general archetype, the gypsy, the wanderer, also the philosopher and, and out there big, right? And then my moon, a little tough to share my moon because my moon sign is very private, like to keep, you know, reserved. So my moon sign is in the sign of Scorpio. So I can be, have intense emotions, be very hard on myself sometimes, but it's also seeing the, the why and the reason behind things because there's a real deep psychological aspect to the sign of Scorpio, which is really nice as well. So amazing. So you guys, um, those of you watching live, if you'd like to ask a question, um, Joanne is going to take a couple of questions. Um, so Nancy was saying, was asking, like, what what is the difference? I guess we kind of talked about this, but did you want to add more? The difference between the sun sign, the moon sign, and the zodiac signs. Okay, so the the sun signs are and the moon signs are part of the zodiac so it all depends on where the sun and moon were what sign the sun and moon were in on the day you were born so the sun if we think of the sun you know we look out in the sky and during the day the sun is out there shining and so the sun is how we shine in the world our true authentic self our purpose in life and where we want to shine in the world and then the moon sign is our own inner personal reflection of our own emotional self within ourselves. So it's the emotions, how we feel, you know, does this feel good? Does this feel right? You know, for like for yourself again there, um, Bridget, the moon and Leo, they need to feel good. Like I love being on stage because it really feeds that part of your emotional self. Yeah. So I hope that helps to answer there, Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why as a person or an entrepreneur should I care about finding out my sun, my moon sign, the zodiac and all that? Like, what does it do for me to know this stuff other than being amusing? Because everybody likes to hear about themselves, right? And True. It, it's fun. But other than that, like, what do people use it for? So we can really use uh, astrology and looking at to see where all the planets were on the day you were born. And the neat thing about astrology is timing of events, okay? So you may be going through a time period where, oh, I'm so tired all the time. Is something physically wrong with me? It could be where some of the planets that are moving, that are affecting you personally, are, you know, there might be a time period where you need to rest and relax. So it really helps you to be in touch with and get into the flow of yourself, okay so and get into that rhythm with nature and when you can find that flow with the planets and know where things are at all the time you can really be more productive with yourself and not be so hard on yourself so it's more of a flow it's getting back to nature with knowing where the planets are for you and how they affect you in your life but it's also helping you to know who you are you know how you love how you act you know, Venus is about love, how you act, take action on things, Mars, or not take action. Um, communication is Mercury, how you how you communicate with other people. And and then the sun and the moon that we already talked about. So it's, it's really beneficial to, to just even to know that about yourself. So, oh, that's why I am the way I am. Like your moon and Leo, oh, this is why I am the way I am. And then all of a sudden you feel better about it. It's like, yes, I'm gonna go and express that more. And it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of helps accept yourself maybe yeah. too. Now, do people get um, kind of like a layout for the year? So, um, for example, when if I was to change the date, like when I host a convention, well, maybe it's better to do it while the moon is there or the sun or like, do people use that? Oh, yeah. People will use the astrology for timing of events. Okay. And so, yes, it's a good time to start things or start start the, looking at the most optimal time okay to start something and if we look at say the phases of the moon for example so we have our new moon we have the first quarter we have the full moon and then the third quarter moon and then back to the new moon 
We can think of the new moon because we're all familiar with the phases of the moon, mostly new moon and full moon. And so the new moon, we're planning, we're, it, it's like planning a party. And the new moon, we're planning the party, making out all the plans and getting all the ideas down. And then the first quarter moon comes along in the next week. All of a sudden, we're taking action. We're starting to implement all of our ideas. And then the full moon is when the party happens. Woo! Okay. Party! I know. And, and this is not <laughs> for the full moon. This is where all the ambulance and the EMS and the fire guys and the police are all like, and hospitals, they will tell you when the full moon comes around, they, they cringe because it can be erratic, like they get busy. So that's when the party happens. And then the third quarter moon, after that, it's you're cleaning up and maybe re readjusting things a little bit. And then there's a little bit of down. Recuperating from the tequila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hangover. The hangover. <laughs> So what's what's this whole thing about uh, Mercury and retrograde and all? Like I like I said, I really know very little about astrology, but that's one of the comments I hear quite often: is oh, M Mercury retrograde and all that. So what does it mean? So Mercury retrograde in in the sky astronomically, it gives the illusion like Mercury's going backwards. Okay, but it looks like it's doing this loop thing in the sky. And so three times a year, Mercury does a retrograde motion. And Mercury, like I said, is all about our communication, our travel and writing and reading and technology. So anything to do with that. And Mercury retrograde's really gotten a bad rap <laughs> over the years. And, but it all boils down to what you think you create. So Mercury retrograde is more about resetting, resting, rejuvenate, uh, recycle, uh, uh, what else is it? All the rewords. Okay. Re reinvent, reuse, reinvent. Reuse, yeah. Reuse, reinvent, recycle, whatever. And so it's being aware of that. You can't stop life because Mercury retrograde happens three times a year. You can't stop life because of it, but you can be aware of it. So if you're son having to sign contracts or deals, go over that thing with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> okay during mercury retrograde you know have somebody else check it you know go over it two or three times in case there's spelling mistakes things need to be oh really my god good. i think i'm stuck in retrograde 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> yeah and, that's very fascinating because a lot of people know about this like quite often you hear yeah, about yeah, mercury and so it's fun watching the world from the perspective and the eyes of an astrologer because things get really funny because the planet and the energies of the planets were reacting to them and they're sort of affecting us whether we like to think so or not so Very it's cool. really oh my god nancy says uh women talk create we creates our own full moon <laughs> <laughs> and we are do you know where are we at do you know do you have it off hand on october 4 5 and 6 i do where was I do. So the, the moon, we're going to be in the first quarter moon. Okay. And it's going to be on the Friday night, Friday and Saturday, the moon's going to be in the sign of Capricorn. All right. And which is really, really awesome because right now two of the big guys planets are in the sign of Capricorn right now, creating a different way of doing things and changing and transforming things. So Capricorn Ooh. is the first sign. It's all about our, our authority and our status and what we expect of ourselves. So it can really bring out a lot of strength and integrity about who we are. And it's about letting go of the grief and the shame and the responsibilities and the obligations. It's getting in touch with those as well. So it's, it's really finding a very power point for ourselves with the moon and Capricorn. So it'll be really nice. You know one of my tagline, right? Come and discover the wonder of you. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's exactly. amazing. That is so amazing. I love it. Now, I want to talk quickly because we're almost running out of time here. But uh, you have the most fabulous Facebook page. Like, let me see. There it goes. As the planets turn. Come on. That is so, so good. I know. I love it. 
That is so cool. So um, do you want to tell people what you're going? Because, you know, I'm all about let the world know. Once you say it, it's happening. So do you want to tell them what we were talking about? Sure, I'll tell them. Okay. So... I'm so putting you on the spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all good. I love the idea. So speaking with Bridget here earlier, she came up with this idea. And I've, I've been mulling it around a little bit anyway. And so... In the future here, in the next, I'm not going to give any dates, but watch for as the planets turn, ramp up a little bit more and giving a weekly uh, video. I guess that's what you call it. Uh, weekly show. Weekly show. You're going to have a weekly show. A weekly show telling you where the planets are for that upcoming week and what to expect energy wise because the planets are constantly shifting and changing and moving and when we have that extra little insight as to what's going on with the planets then it's like oh that's why i feel this way uh Woo! so yeah i'm going to start a uh weekly show of as the planets turn and so watch for that and oh my god okay so you got it right here live on the women talk show joanne has announced her show as the planet turns and i'm telling you i am certainly going to tune in i'm going to tell my mom because she loves astrology she's going to tune in and well my aunts that speak english maybe one of them <laughs> not very well i know they all love it but this is going to be so good look see look look what I'm telling you, people are popping on here and they're all excited, saying it's amazing, it's cool, they're going to love it. So you're going to have to do this and I know I will tune in. So maybe we'll have you back on the show when you're ready to go. Yes. Uh, we'll have you back on the show and we'll do a big launch. But until then, um, if you want to find out a little bit more about Joanne, she's going to be at the convention on October 4, 5, and 6. Go buy your tickets. It's three days, 13 speakers, as amazing as Joanne. The, the topics are wide and varied. You got, you heard it from Joanne. It's the perfect time to come and discover the wonder of you and reboot yourself and maybe start a whole new life. And there has been a few people that have started a whole new life. Um, so come and join us, Joanne. Thank you so very much. Thank you for being part. I can't, I'm looking, like, where do I take this off now? Uh, there we go. Uh, thank, thank you for being part of the tribe. You are a very, very important part of Women Talk now. You are a talker, a director, a member. It is incredible. Come and join us at the convention. Thank you so much for hosting me. And having thank, me. You. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and uh, we'll keep you posted on Joanne's new, brand new live show, As the Planets Turn. Bye for now. Bye.